welcome to you so you hopefully this will be quite a short one this week uh, just a couple of things to show you um, not anything uh, in, in the way of finished objects um, I've obviously been working on that uh, test knit so that's taken up most of my time um, but I'll, I'll show you that in due course as soon as the pattern's released so that you can see what I managed to do with it uh, it's been an enjoyable knit uh, the faux brioche I messed up more times than I like to count um, it's meant to be easier than real brioche but I made more mistakes in it than I would with normal brioche um, so I'm not sure that I find it personally easier but then I've not done it before so you know swings and roundabouts so I just wanted to share with you a couple of um, things I've picked up this month oh by the way I'm Zoe I forgot to mention that um, this is You Sew You where I talk about my knitting and my sewing and my weaving and any other crafts that sort of come to mind um, but I have actually had a little bit of acquisition right at the beginning of month, end of September, beginning of October, they just weren't here in time for my September roundup. The first thing, um, if you remember from my last video, I was talking about how I hadn't been able to make the crafting trousers because my sewing machine had started skipping stitches. Um, you might think, okay, take it into the repairman. But my sewing machine is about 12 years old and it cost me £40. Pounds. Um, I would be hard pushed to find a repairman to um, look at it for anything that wasn't more than that price to service it fully um, so I figured well I'll have a go see if I can sort it out myself and then if I still am having tr trouble with it then I'll take it in so I bought myself this book if you don't have this book I highly recommend it uh, this will save you an awful lot of money um, it's written by a man who has a mechanical little background he's repaired sewing machines himself uh, so this is 20 years in the US Air Force uh, his wife was um, making clothes for their six children um, but they kept moving around so he learnt to repair sewing machines by looking after hearts um, 25 years of sewing machine experience he has before he read this book and it's nice and clear it's nice and thin um, it's all split out into handy little sections now the reason I know this is going to save you a lot of money is because when I read it First, uh, chapter two, sew machine skips stitches. Okay. I didn't need to take my sewing machine in for a repair, sort out the skip stitches problem. I haven't tested the machine yet, but first thing he says, pretty much, make sure your needle's not bent, make sure it's in the right way around. Guess what? Needle was bent, needle was in the wrong way around. So yeah, I didn't even realise there was a right way around and wrong way around for needles to go. Turns out there is. You need the flat side facing the, the um, shaft of the sewing machine. So those are two likely causes for why my machine was skipping stitches. Um, so I'll be testing that out hopefully either later on this evening or tomorrow. But I have just watched Doctor Who so it might be a little bit late to... Uh, get on the sewing machine at 8 o'clock in the evening with really thin walls on a Sunday night but we'll see um, the other things I wanted to show you I put in a pound fabrics order just before the last video and it hadn't arrived um, it has now uh, first off I have some they've simply called it knit fabric um, it's very stretchy, it's very jersey like but it's quite a thin weave in this bronzy colour uh, and pound fabrics being pound fabrics you have to buy three meters so I have three meters of this uh, so I'm thinking long line jersey cardigan perhaps and I just so happened to have got a free pa uh, 10 for one with um, a sewing magazine this month uh, well last month so that's a contender possibly a jersey dress uh, possibly a couple of t-shirts we'll see um, I think you're quite likely to be um, a cardigan of some description you'll see why in a minute um, although one option is to pair it with the other pan fabrics uh, fabrics which are two velours um, in the same pattern but different colourways so I have this browny one and I have this midnighty one uh, if you notice these burnt out flowers are really sheer they're also a lot bigger than I thought they would be when I looked at the photos online uh, but that's okay, it's not a problem. I won't be, won't be using them for a dress unless I'm lining it, which is a potential for 
that bronze jersey because that would actually look pretty good underneath the burnout it's a similar color some sort of color family to the, the background material uh, the other fabric I've had arrive hasn't cost me a penny um, you may remember last month I did a project with some nautical print polycotton for Minerva Crafts um, that blog is going to go up on the Minerva Craft website in late December by the look of it which I know is a bit of a long wait but uh, there are quite a few people on the team so that's understandable um, I have got another delivery from them for another blog post and it is more floor we have this beautiful tan floral print velour um, it is again fairly stretchy of the uh, wrong side so it's again fairly stretchy so I'm thinking uh, maybe something from the Tilly and the Button stretch book possibly the journey dress possibly I think it's Freya the other dress that put quite a lot of people put the frill on but without the frill something like that because uh, I have the book now um, and I haven't made anything from it yet so I think that would look quite elegant in a very simple pattern uh, to show off the fabric and um, pairing that with perhaps a long line cardigan in that bronze knit from Pound Fabrics uh, so I've got lots of options for, for the bronze jersey knit um, if you're wondering what the difference between velour and velvet is because I wondered um, what I gathered from a brief Google was that velvet is usually woven and velour is a knit um, and quite often velour is marketed as velvet I mean the one from Minerva Fabrics they, they call it a velvet velour so they are very similar textures um, you, they'll give a very similar look, similar feel you need to have the same considerations in terms of uh, the direction the nap goes but um, you'll want a stretch needle for velour whereas you might not for velvet um, that seems to be largely the difference as far as I can find out from a very cursory Google search if you know any more details about the difference between velour and velvet by all means stick it in the comments down below um, I'd love to hear what you've got to say um, that's what I have to show you this week I should hopefully be back uh, with some knitting content at some point soon um, I really want to get to a chance to film the socks that I've been improvising still haven't got to the heel but I uh, was getting that shawl out of the way first um, and I need to cast on that elephant as well um, so it's only a couple of weeks till half term uh, when my colleague goes on maternity leave so I need to get that done for her um, so I'll leave it there for now and I'll see you hopefully next weekend with the craft deep trousers made possibly a bit of knitting progress um, so bye for now uh, like and subscribe down below and tick the bell if you want notifications make a comment pop on over to the blog at usou.com and I will see you soon bye